What's up YouTube, my name is Kevin and this is a Toad Life Gear Review. Today I'm here with the 511 Tactical Rush 24 bag 2.0. Stick around, I'm going to tell you what I like about this bag, what I don't like about it, I'll walk you through it and maybe help you decide if this is the right bag for you. Okay, so this is the Rush 24 from 511 Tactical. It's a 37 liter bag made out of 1000D nylon. Very sturdy, rugged. It offers a ton of organization options. There's pockets everywhere. And as you can clearly see, there is molly everywhere on this bag. So it has a very tactical look to it, right? We've got molly on the front, molly up here. You got molly by the grab handle, molly on the sides, molly on the bottom, molly and lots of it. So that can come in pretty handy if you do want to expand the capacity of this pack. You have any number of options for doing so, utilizing all kinds of you know, available molly pouches, first aid kits, you name it, you can attach it to this bag. So outside of the uh, molly, there is a few different Velcro patch places too. So that's, uh, you know, if you want to put a morale patch on there, you got a spot to do it here. This is a great area for a name tape if you want to put your name tape in your bag. You know, if you're walking around in public, maybe not a great idea to have a name tape on your bag, but if you're in a group setting or you're going camping, I, I don't know, maybe your buddy's got the same bag, you can put a name tape on there. Zipper pulls are a nice feature in my opinion. They are glove friendly. Even if you have thick gloves on, these are nice long zipper pulls and they don't make a lot of noise. So we have three pockets on the front of this pack. One large one and two what I'd call butterfly pockets that open out. And this pocket is an admin pocket with a lot of organization inside. So if we take a peek inside that pocket, you can see lots of different spots to put stuff. You got some pen holders here, some floating pockets. Uh, you got some hold downs over uh, some larger accordion-like pockets, a big zip pocket in the back. You got a lanyard for keys if you want to hang them in there, another drop-in pocket, and then two fairly large drop-in pockets here. And these pockets are pretty deep, so they start about here and go down to the bottom. Uh, same with the inside pockets. So lots of organizational opportunity in the inside of that pocket. Behind that pocket, and part of what makes this a 2.0 is You'll notice a little nylon tab right here. You pull that and you've got a hidden CCW pocket, right? So um, there is Velcro on the back of there. If you want to affix something Velcro, it's not going to move around in there. One thing to note though is that there's no volume to this pocket if you've got the bag stuffed real big or a lot of stuff in there, I should say, and any amount of stuff in this, you're not left with a whole lot of space in there. So whatever you do put in there is gonna eat into your interior space a bit and then you know, possibly make it harder to, to load this out fully. But it is a pretty cool feature. Um, obviously you don't have to use it for CCW, but uh, anything you drop in there is relatively hidden. The only thing I don't like about that pocket is there's no protection from rain. So. You know, you don't have Velcro all the way across. You got a couple strips of Velcro with a gap in the middle. And the way this is configured, if rain's coming down on this part of the pack, you know, you've got a flap here protecting your zipper, but there's nothing preventing water from going right into that pocket. So not uh, my favorite feature of the pack. Above that, we've got these two butterfly pockets. And these are really nice for organizing quick access stuff. Um, you've got in each a drop-in pocket with some felt material or some very soft material behind it and then you've got uh, a mesh zip pocket on the other side. One thing to note is that they are not completely separated so there is a little bit of space right here and I know it's probably hard to see out to show some better angles but there is a little bit of space right here where stuff can slip in between if you had something very small in there you could definitely lose it over to the other side and 
maybe have a hard time finding it, but these are handy. I typically kept uh, AirPods and some quick access stuff in there when I was uh, toting this as an EDC bag. And then on this side, I had some personal care items that I use fairly regularly. Uh, and that worked out pretty well for quick access. So otherwise on the front of the bag, we've got some compression st straps that come around from the side. Um, you know, I've never really used these. To me, the way they're set up, that would be one, uh, another one of my minor gripes with this pack is that you've got compression straps at the top. And you know, that's great if you want to cinch it down and compress it, but you've got no compression down here. So not really that utilitarian, right? If I want to cinch down the top and this is nice and compressed, but the bottom's bulky, especially if you're putting, you know, your larger bulkier items towards the bottom of your bag. These really don't do much for you and what they end up actually doing is hindering your access because in order to unzip this panel fully, you've got to undo these straps, right? So if you want to unzip that all the way down to get full, almost what I would consider full flat access, not quite, but um, if you want to get anywhere near that, you got to undo that strap. So more often than not, I just wind up using this as a half zip bag because uh, these compression straps are in the way. And that's really about it for the front of the bag. Moving on to the sides, we've got lots of molly up the sides, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six rows of three by molly on the side of the bag. The other side is the, the same exact uh, setup. As I mentioned already, you've got the compression strap here, and then you also have a side pocket on both of these. So this side pocket's pretty big. Uh, it's almost the entire length of the bag. You might be able to fit, I don't know, a small spotting scope in there, although that might be a stretch. And then it's got this little slash pocket towards the top, which is only about that wide, but um, you know, you can slide something in there for quick access. It's not gonna fall down to the bottom and get buried. Uh, lots of little nooks and crannies to put stuff in in this bag and you know that's a plus but it can also be a bit of a minus in my opinion. Same zipper pulls on that side access. Uh, again that's fairly large so that zipper runs from here all the way to the bottom of the pack that's full open. These are the same as the CCW pocket in that there's really no volume to these. So if you've got the internal bag loaded out fat, you don't have any space to really put anything into it. The volume of this pocket eats into the interior. So it's good for some flat items. When I was using this every day, I had a uh, 30,000 milliamp hour uh, battery pack that I would keep in there. And that was a great place to put it. It was nice and flat and compact. Moving on to the back of the bag, we've got um, a set of straps in a yoke configuration. So these straps are connected. They're not separated. Uh, I, you know, I don't really find it uncomfortable or more comfortable. I mean, I didn't really notice that the straps had this yoke when I wore it. Uh, I did use this bag every day for several months, probably close to a year. And it wasn't uncomfortable. It wasn't, I don't think that added any comfort to it, but it didn't take any away either. So um, the straps are nicely padded. They're relatively thick nice and wide. They've got a nice curve to them. Uh, the pack did come with a sternum strap. I don't have it attached. It's the type of sternum strap with a, it has a plastic hook on it that kind of loops into a piece of molly. Not the most um, secure sternum strap on a pack I own. I think it's in the interior of the bag. When we get to that, I'll pull it out and show you, but um, I didn't really use it. I didn't feel like it was very sturdy to be quite honest with you. So the material on the back of the straps is much different than the material on the front of the straps or the main bag is same with the material on the back so i don't know if that's a a 210 or what that is but it's a little bit slicker a um, little bit less resistance makes the bag a little bit easier to get on and off so not a bad feature then on the back we've got some padded areas there's four padded areas and i think you know the intention there was to provide a little bit of separation and you've got these big channels that provide some airflow. To be quite honest though, it's really insufficient to achieve that. So these are, I mean, you don't get much depth in there. There's not much standoff. So you're really not getting a ton of ventilation on the back of, um, well, your back when you're wearing this pack. So I think that would be another minor gripe for me. Inside this area is a frame sheet. It is removable. 
Behind that frame sheet, there is a laptop compartment. So you've got a pouch right here or a Velcro area. You can uh, pull the frame sheet out of there. Then you know, the frame sheet adds rigidity, uh, helps distribute the load, helps keep the shape of the bag. Uh, it is nice to have that in there. The padding behind it is fairly thick. I just wish it was a little bit thicker in these areas to provide a little bit more standoff and ventilation. So inside there, and I don't know if this is actually, I use it as a lap co compartment, but really I think what its, its main purpose or its stated purpose is uh, a hydration pocket, right? So you've got uh, a nylon loop here with some Velcro. You can hang a hydration bladder off there. Hydration bladder sits in there. There's a split nylon area right here where you could route the hose out, maybe down one of the straps if you wanted to. So I never really used this for hydration bladders. I did, however, usually put my laptop in there. This compartment also looks like it's protected from water leaks if your bladder should leak. This, this material seems to be have some sort of rubberized coating on it. Um, it seems to me that if you had a water leak, you're probably mostly safe from that penetrating to the inside. However, it is important to note that right on the other side of this, on the inside, is I think the official laptop compartment where you know they, they purposely built for a laptop. Another odd aspect, or I should say a, a odd aspect of this pocket is the zipper configuration. So you've got two zippers on here, but they terminate on opposite ends which took a little while to get used to. You know, you can open it from this side or you can open it from that side, so that's handy, but um, I'm just not used to seeing a zipper configured that way. You know, usually both zippers end on one side and then you can kind of position them where you want, open from there. These terminate on opposite ends, so. All right, uh, one last thing on here I would note is that you do have some buckles on the bottom if you wanted to thread a hip belt through there. You've got some built-in buckles to do that. It did not come with a hip belt, but that is an option. All right, so let's take a look at the top of the bag. The top of the bag, we've got a pretty nice grab handle. It's, it's nylon folded over. It looks like stitched up a little bit. There's no padding to it, but it is pretty nice width uh, and it looks really sturdy. Uh, it's stitched relatively well. We've got some molly loops next to it on either side too. And then the only other thing on the top that I'd mention is the uh, sunglass pocket. So you've got a pocket on the top with some nice soft interior. Great place to put a pair of shades. As long as your bag's not completely stuffed, they'll be safe. If it is, you might smash them. There's no rigidity to that pocket. And it, whatever you do put in there also eats into the volume of your main compartment. So I, I suppose this would still be the top as well. You've got these final strips of molly from the side that end at the top. The bottom of the bag has four molly loops. That could come in handy if you were gonna take this on a trail maybe and you wanted to tie a bedroll to the bottom of it. You've got the ability to do that. Maybe you wanna cinch a tripod to the bottom. That's a nice feature to have the molly on the bottom. Provides a little bit more versatility. That wraps it up for the exterior of the bag. Let's take a look at the main compartment. So I'm gonna unbuckle the compression straps so that I can fully open the main compartment. I've got a couple things in here, mainly just to add some, some uh, bulk to it so it wasn't flat, but this is my everyday carry pecking cube with a change of clothes. And I've got a couple other miscellaneous items in here. But one thing to note about this is that it's almost, almost full clamshell. So it would have been great, in my opinion, if they would have went the extra few inches and gave you the full clamshell. But as it stands, you're getting mostly full clamshell. Um, I get, you know, you could fold it over, it lays flat a little bit, um, but it's, it is kind of leverages that bottom part of the bag back into itself and kind of annoying if you're going to load it out full and you want something to sit on the bottom in this configuration you've got to stuff it down in there and then this wants to close on itself so another minor annoyance with this pack uh, I, I wish they would have went the extra mile or inch in this case and gave us full clamshell open. But the inside of the bag does offer for a lot more organization. We've got two big mesh pockets. 
uh, I should say one big, one smaller, and then a solid pocket on the bottom, which is kind of hidden. So the zippers on these are pretty small. You've got some paracord zipper pulls on them. This pocket has a lot of uh, volume to it, but whatever you put in there, it like a, you know, is like most of the other pockets we've talked about is eating into the volume of your bag. So um, that incidentally is where I have the sternum strap. So the sternum strap is this type where you've got a little plastic clip on there and you can clip it into the molly and not the most secure method for attaching a sternum strap. I would not feel comfortable putting a whole lot of stress on that point. Um, and uh, I didn't use it at all. So. <coughs> all right, other than that, you've got the area here that you can see is the sunglass pocket. So anything in there is, is essentially sitting in your main area. Behind that, you've got what I believe they consider the, the official laptop compartment. Um, I did not use this as a laptop compartment because it's really a pain in the ass to put a laptop in and out of this compartment if you have the bag loaded. Plus the fact that you, you can't open it fully without undoing these buckles. You know, you fold it open, you, you gotta reach inside, try to grab it. If you've got a bunch of stuff in there, you're trying to dig behind it. So for me, this pocket worked out much better for a laptop or sometimes my iPad. But this pocket is padded. It does have a false bottom. So it does not go all the way down to the bottom. And uh, that provides a little bit of assurance that your laptop won't bounce off the concrete when you put the bag down. So that is a nice feature. Um, I would like to see maybe a little bit thicker padding and I'd really like to see it zip off. And what would make this bag fantastic would be if you had some sort of side access to that pocket so that you didn't have to get to it inside. In reality, what I'd really like to see is that access, this pocket totally closed off from the inside of the bag and you just access it from a side zip or maybe even a top zip. Um, but as it stands, not a horrible configuration, just not my favorite. All right, so I'm gonna sum this up with my likes and my dislikes. And overall, Overall, it's not a bad pack, especially if you like a lot of organization. I did use this every day for several months, six months to a year. I use this every day for work. There's a lot of good about it. It's got a lot of organization, uh, a lot of places to put stuff to um, keep everything you've got organized. It's one of those bags that it takes a little bit of a time to grow into it and kind of get a feel for where you're gonna keep everything. And once you do, you know exactly where to go for stuff. But on the other hand, it's also one of those bags where there is a lot of areas things can hide from you. You could stick stuff in places and maybe not see it again for, I mean, I, I think I've completely emptied this bag out, but I may find something in a pocket, in a pocket, in a pocket. So uh, ultimately I opted for something a little simpler for everyday carry right now. So I'm using something with significantly less organization and I do more modular packing. Uh, this would be a great bag for me to maybe a grab and go bag or a get home bag that sits in the back of the truck or a bug out bag, something of that nature where you're going to put a bunch of stuff in there. It's all going to be organized and you're never going to take it out and switch bags or move to a bigger bag for travel or any of those scenarios where you're just going to load this out and it sits there ready to go. That to me would be a great use of this bag. You know, I, that's just for my personal style. If you are the type of person that loves organization, loves a ton of pockets, likes spaces to put stuff, then this is definitely the bag for you. And, you know, in addition, if, if you're a Molly fan, lots of Molly on this bag. For my likes, number one, I like the material. The 1000D nylon is very substantial. It's durable. I think this bag is going to last a while. Number two, I like the, the versatility that all the Molly uh, provides. This is the bag for you if, if, if you have stuff that you like to slash or tie to the outside of your pack. You can pretty much tie anything to this bag pretty much anywhere with the amount of molly they provide. Number three, 
I like the size. I think overall it's a pretty good size for everyday carry. Um, it's not too big and it's not too small. It's right in the middle somewhere. Uh, it might be a little big for some people. If you're a smaller frame person, this could be a pretty big bag for me. I think it's a good size. Now onto the dislikes. Number one, I don't like the compression strap setup. I don't like that they interfere with the full opening of the bag and that there's only one set at the top allowing for compression on the top of the bag only. Number two, I don't like the fact that the bag doesn't full open lay flat clamshell access. It's almost there, but not quite. And I'm not sure why we didn't just go the rest of the way to provide the full clamshell open. Number three, I think the organization is a little bit too much for me. Now, if that's your thing, this is a great bag because it does have a lot of organization. For me though, there's pockets inside of pockets and a lot of opportunity to, to lose stuff inside of all those pockets. Overall, I like this bag. I think you're getting a pretty good bag for the money. Uh, if you like Molly and tactical and you like pockets and accessories, then this is definitely a bag to consider.